Oh. <laughs> Hi everyone, welcome. I just dropped my note. Okay, hold on a minute. Here we go. It's, uh, it is Inspiration Wednesday time. Hopefully I'm inspiring you with a little humor right now. Hmm. Okay, so I can't stick my note there. I'll just hold on to it. <laughs> Hi everyone, it's Stacy, Reverend Stacy, here for Inspiration Wednesday on August 17th. Got a couple birthdays in our uh, family coming up. My mom's birthday is tomorrow. Make sure you say hello and happy birthday to her. I know she'll be here soon if she's not on yet. And a happy birthday to my son, Graham. He will be a legal adult on Friday and then we take him to college on Saturday. So happy birthday to him as well. Okay, well I'm back for Inspiration Wednesday. Didn't know if I was gonna make it, folks. Didn't know. Just gonna be totally honest and transparent here. As you know, I always like to be. It was a rough week. So in case you don't know, let me catch y'all up. I had COVID for a week at the beginning of the month, like a week, like, you know, yeah, mild. You all saw me here. I still did Inspiration Wednesday. I still did some video parts for our church service. Went to church because I had tested negative twice on day six and 10 and had great energy, I was feeling great. Day 15, start sneezing, think it's allergies or something. And then day 16, which was a week ago Tuesday, mm, knocked down and positive again. So that's my story and it was a rough one. The second bout was a rough one. So that's what I'm talking about today. I was trying to get actually Graham to do today's Inspiration Wednesday for me and he was a no-go. <laughs> I think it's good because then I get to share what to do when you start to spiral. So that's what I'm talking about. Because like, like I said earlier, just a minute ago, you know what? We got to be authentic with each other. Okay, no more of this. Um, I mean, it's called toxic positivity. No more put a band-aid over, you know, the positivity band-aid over stuff and calling it good because there's still a festering wound underneath. So... When we show up authentic, meaning with all of our range of feelings, first of all, if you can feel and experience, allow yourself to feel and experience, acknowledge the full range of emotions, then that means emotional maturity is there and happening. But also when we can be authentic and honest and real and transparent with everyone around us, then it invites them to also do the same. And then really that's how we all help each other out. So with that in mind, <laughs> so I was spiraling. Uh, yeah, I got knocked down hard with the second round of COVID physically, but also mentally and emotionally to a point where the last few days didn't recognize myself. And so that's when, so a couple, so here's the tools, whether it's COVID and I hope none of you get it. And I know those of you who have reached out to me and have said, it's a ride. Um, and I'm not planting that seed in anyone's head too, by the way. It doesn't have to be a ride. For my husband, totally fine. Many other people, totally fine. So that doesn't have to be your experience. But whether it's COVID or something else going on in your life, where there's lots of big processing and feelings and uh, sadness, depression, anger, all of that, uh, frustration, shaming yourself, like with all those feelings, with all those feelings, first of all, that's where our self-awareness comes in. This is why we train ourselves in self-awareness, becoming more aware of how we react to certain situations, becoming the observer. So the more that we can step into being the observer versus just being in the feeling and there and blah, right? At some point we gotta pull ourselves back and be the observer and go, wow, wait a minute. This is not who I truly am. This is not who I am. This is not me. And so with that self-awareness, that allows us to take, make another choice, to take another route. And so part of my little sticky note notes here was, um, you know, to, when you're noticing that your mind has taken over, when your mind starts to go down the road of negativity and gloom and doom, that's when we need to tell our brains, brain, thank you for working so hard. 
I'm going to put a pause right here, right now. We're going to pause you with your negative thoughts and worry and concern. We're going to put a pause. And if we want to pick it back up later, we can. But right now, we're going to pause. And then movement and moving the energy. So it's something I discovered. It's something my doctor also recommended to me um, and my therapist too of, you know, getting then engaged in an activity. A lot of times that's helping other people um, or it's just moving. Like my doctor was saying, she does the dishes. <laughs> She's like, cause I like those dishes spotless. And I'm like, oh, with the dishes. And so that's like a big movement for her. So whatever the um, movement, it could be a walk. Um, it could be cleaning your dishes, doing your laundry, taking a drawer and cleaning it out, whatever it is, but to really kind of distract yourself sometimes, right? When you, again, when you're really getting into a negativity spiral. So self-awareness, recognizing when your brain's on like overworking and telling it to, it's okay, we can pause, getting some movement in there, doing something else, changing, changing it up. Um, and then the thought too, and here was something else that got reminded to me, this too shall pass. This too shall pass, it really will. I can tell you that from my own past health challenges, that although, um, you know, there's parts of it I'm still living with, with medication, but you know what, the major part of pain and uh, everything happening around that, it passed. And even today, feeling so much better, um, just feeling much better emotionally, physically. So again, this too shall pass. And no matter what it is in your life, again, I'm using COVID as my example because I've just lived it the last week, but whatever it is in your life, just knowing this too shall pass. And it was something that it was a mantra we've used a few times, at different points in our lives here with different health challenges or different work challenges or different life challenges. This too shall pass. I tell parents of young kids, you know, really hold on to those great moments, because they do go fast. But also know that when you're in those challenging times with your kids, this too shall pass. That those challenging times go just as fast as the great times. It's just life. So this too shall pass. Um, and you heard me already say, you know, when you find yourself in times of negativity, of depression, of anxiety, of worry, of again, the mind spiraling out, reaching out for support. That's part of that self-awareness piece of like, I can't do this alone. And we shouldn't do it alone. We're human beings. Human beings are here to be connected to one another. That's part of our DNA makeup. So to reach out and get support. So getting support from a doctor or a therapist or a minister or a friend or a family member, whatever you need to do. And also getting support for yourself in the way of, you know, I got um, a supplement that has really helped. I think that has also really helped the last couple of days. Um, you know, so our supplements, are you eating? You know, are you eating healthy and well for yourself? Are you getting sleep? Oh my gosh, the sleep thing, right? Everyone, it's big. Um, sleep heals us. It heals our bodies, it heals our minds. So making sure that you're supporting yourself and reaching out to friends, family, professionals. Um, I know my acupuncturist, when he was here in town, I would reach out to him a lot. You know, whoever you need to reach out to who can also support you. And it could be more than one person too. And then that reminds me, my friend said to me the other day, you know, what does your inner child need? What is your inner child needing right now? So again, when we're in those moments of feeling um, sad or defeated, or like life's not happening the way we want it to right now, turning within and really asking your inner child what, what he or she needs. What are you needing right now? Sometimes it's an app. Sometimes it's a mandala coloring. That's what oftentimes I come back to coloring. Very interesting. Uh, or it could be a walk or it could be a talk or, you know, whatever it is. But really tapping into your own inner child or maybe it's your inner teenager. Maybe it's going through all the stages. Now, what does my teenager self need? What does my 20 year old self need? You know, really tapping into that child within and 
and finding out what they need. Play. Yes, Deborah. Play. We don't play enough. Laughter. I was going to say, I was remembering that today too, you know, to laugh. My mom sent me some funny um, videos. So I'm going to shout out my mom. She sent me some good Tim Conway videos um, and Carol Burnett, right? Or there was another one there too. So yeah, getting humor in. Humor really helps. Again, move the energy. When I was talking about earlier, moving that energy. Uh, humor can definitely move the energy. Um, okay, so then last, you know what? So that's, so there you go. What I talk about, I talked about self-awareness, being the observer. Don't let your thoughts spin out of control. Just put a pause, say, hey, we're gonna put a pause here. <laughs> and then uh, this too shall pass, getting the support you need from professionals, from um, family, from friends, from ministers, from um, your own, you know, journaling, sleep, 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 sleep some more. Um, yeah, making sure you support yourself how you need and then asking your inner child what they need. And so speaking of support and inner ch children, child, you know, I wanted to share this great, I know probably all of you have heard this story. It's a fantastic story, the Little League story, everyone. This happened, um, so this is from yesterday's newspaper, but it happened on Monday. It was um, the Little League, it was, let's see, it was in Waco, Texas. It was a regional playoffs for the Little League World Series. Did you all hear about this? And so, the pitcher, and they're like, um, how old are they? Like 10 or 11 or something. Um, so the pitcher pitches the ball, and unfortunately, it hit the batter in the head. Luckily, they had the helmet on, but they went whoosh, right down to the ground, and they were holding their head, and they didn't get up for a moment. Um, then they finally did get up and walked to first base. And when he got to first base, he looked over and noticed that the pitcher was crying. And so the guy who got hit, the boy who got hit, walks over to the pitcher on the pitcher's mound. Do you see this? Yeah, and gives him a hug and consoles him. Oh my gosh, I'm gonna tear up and cry just telling you all this story. Yeah, he came over, <laughs> the guy who got hit in the head, he came over to the pitcher and he said, uh, let me see here, he said, uh, bah, bah, bah. hold on, he said, um, uh, just, it's gonna be okay. He hugged me and he said, it's okay, you've got this. He was saying this to the guy who just hit him in the head. Um, it's okay, take some deep breaths, think some hot, happy thoughts, you've got this. That's what the boy said. Take deep breaths and just think happy thoughts. Yeah, wow. What children can teach us all? Just about, you know, friendship, sportsmanship, helping each other, supporting each other. But I also want to say that to all of you. Take a deep breath. You've got this. Think happy thoughts. So let's take a moment. I know we're right at 1244, but can we take an extra few minutes just to meditate together, okay? Uh, so go ahead and settle in, because I want you to really focus on what is it that my inner child needs today? How can I comfort that inner child today? So go ahead and uh, again, get comfortable, close your eyes. That helps me to visualize. Take a breath. You've got this. <laughs> Maybe take another breath so your shoulders can come down and your eyes can close. And I want you to imagine that little girl or boy who lives within you. Maybe, I don't know, how old are they? Just notice, how old is that child? The child that today needs some comforting. Just allow that child to stand before you. And ask your younger self, your child self, what is it that you need today? What is it that you need in this moment to help with your healing? And just listen. Maybe they say a word, maybe they speak, maybe they show you a picture. Allow your inner child to show you what it is that is needed today in this moment. Maybe it's permission to be just slow. 
<laughs> we're so used to being so quick and fast and getting things done. Maybe it's permission to cry. Maybe it's permission to play. Maybe it's just a hug. Maybe your inner child just needs a hug today. And so listening, giving them a hug, thanking them for the message, telling them that they're safe, that together you can get through everything, that you're gonna breathe, You're gonna get support and help when needed. And you're gonna think happy thoughts. So go ahead and give your inner child that one more hug. Place them back inside you. Fill that space with love. The energy of love, the feeling of love, the color of love. Taking another deep breath. Just acknowledging the peace that you feel, the gratitude that you feel in this moment, having listened. Knowing it's going to be all right, this too shall pass. And so we take another breath. We slowly open our eyes. Ah, and we say thank you. We give thanks and say thank you for this moment. So I want to thank all of you for this moment, for listening, for being a witness. I'm here to be a witness to all of you as well. Again, the more authentic all of us can be, it allows others to be authentic too. And then we can live freer, happier lives. Yeah. So thank you for spending your Wednesday afternoon with me. I hope to see you on Sunday. Actually, Reverend Sherry is uh, speaking her regular Sunday, and she's got a great message coming. So I hope to see you uh, Sunday online or in person and uh, next Wednesday as well. Remember, you can always listen to this as a podcast. Go back and listen to Spiritual Inspirations is what it's called as a podcast. And our YouTube channel has so many fantastic fantastic Sunday services, messages, meditations, and music videos. So go check that out too. And uh, please sign up for our upcoming E-squared study groups. You'll have to check that out uh, in our e-letters or just email our office for more information. I'll be putting out an email here on social media, I mean a video here on social media as well. Okay, everyone, have a fantastic rest of your day. Blessings. Take a breath. Think happy thoughts. You've got this. Goodbye.